Are your characters looking a little bold? Need to grow hair fast? You need Houdini, the number one formula for hair grooming. The only cure for hairless CGI characters. Watch this video now and your characters will never have to suffer from baldness ever again. Alright, that was a bit of a joke. I might have had way too much fun with Houdini's hair grooming system. I'm gonna kickstart this hair series off with the basics as usual. By the end of this video, you'll know all the basics in setting up a simple hair groom system in Houdini. I'll outline the importance of having clean skin geometry, all this combined to get you the best hair grooming experience. The skin of your geometry is probably the most important element to getting started in grooming hair in Houdini because the hair grows directly from the skin or surface of your geometry. Now here's a little birdie model that I created in ZBrush and we're going to use this for our skin geometry and start growing hair off this little guy. This project file and this model will be available for perk members usually a couple days after I release the video. Back to hair. Usually you would grow hair from a selected portion of the jump tree unless you're doing like a hairball. Let's say I'm trying to prepare hair for this little guy, but only on the top portion of this bird. So you would groom portions of it. That way you have more control over the grooming process. Create a geometry context. This is gonna be the hair. And I'm gonna bring in the geometry using an object merge. And it would be this guy over here. So it's the low poly version. Oh, then let's see into this object so that the transforms are all nice and hide other geometries let's generate some hair let's drop down the hair gen node yay we have hair okay it is a little hard to see so mouse is over the viewport hit d on the keyboard change the background to dark that way you can see the hair a lot better now if you need to you can just hide the grid line as well if you want i'm just going to keep it there great we have hair and we don't see the skin which is normal because this output is the hair guides so there are hair guides this isn't actually hair yet they're just guides which contains all this different information right now it only has the width but it, it will contain a lot of attribute information for example you may start off with just a few strands of hair just to optimize it and then get the shape going, brush it, groom it, and then you want to multiply it. You want to optimize your whole look dev, your whole development process. So have as few hair as possible until the end, right up until the end, then you multiply and go crazy. Now, what happened to my skin? The skin is actually still there. It's in the second output, it's still here. There's also something else wrong with this is that, uh, let me template this. I'm getting hair on the beak, so I don't want that. We can use groups to help us control where the hair will grow. There's a lot of groups in this guy, so I'm going to branch out just so we can mess around with this. I'm going to color it black because we're just testing this. Now, let's start off with growing hair off his head. Now, you can see I have a lot of groups available for you, but we're going to start off with just the head. Okay, get rid of the template. That looks great, right? Well, I can't really see behind the beak to see if it's overlapping it or what's going on behind the beak. So what we can use is the visualize node, visual, visibility node, sorry, visibility node. And what this does will turn objects on and off only in the viewport. Now you can see that visibility is turning everything off in the viewport, but it's still here. Geometry is still there. We just can't see it. And why is this useful? It's, let me show you. You may want to select something that's behind, that's hidden behind another geometry. Why can't I split or delete the stuff that's in my way? Because once we remove geometry, Houdini will start reassigning the point numbers and everything will be different. You might not want that. Like that will mess up your wrangles, your vex, or whatever you have going on. So visibility allows you to gently sort of disable just the visibility in the viewport. So this allows us to hide the beak so we can see what's going on behind it. But the beak is still there, just to keep that in mind. So you can see here that this is not really good because the beak portion is still selected in the group, in the head group. So we're gonna get hair inside the beak. Let's just try it. Let's actually connect all this and give it a try. 
No, visibility will be black as well. So those of you that follow my channel know that I like to color the debug or testing nodes black. Later on, once we're done, we're going to bypass this visibility just to return everything back to normal. Uh, I hope you can see since we're only hiding the beak in the viewport, so it's still generating hair on the beak. But what I really wanted to show you is that there's hair inside the beak. To really illustrate this, let's let's blast this. Just blast a portion of these. Okay, that, that helps a bit. And then I'll turn on the points. So you can see that there is hair growing inside inside the beak area. So the beak used to be here, or sorry, here. I can't use this one. Okay. There's the beak and there's hair still here. So there's hair still there and we don't want that. Well, it won't matter as much because the beak is actually covering it most of the time. But say you wanted to open the beak, say this, this character is actually rich. He will eventually open his mouth and you're going to see hair inside of the mouth, which is not a good thing. So it's, it's good to spend a bit of time on the skin because that's one of probably the most influential elements in grooming the hair because that's where the hair grows from. We have the head, that's a start, but we don't want this area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this head hair. I'm going to unblock it since it's going to be actually part of the functionality now. And I'm going to create another group and this will contribute to the head hair. So this is a nice way of organizing your group selections by name it the same one. So I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to copy this, paste it in. So instead of replace existing, because this will just replace it, which is not what we want. I want to subtract from existing. I want the existing head selection, which is what we had here, but minus the beak part. So I'm going to make this selection manually. I'm going to be using the paintbrush and this little eye icon. And what this does is that it ensures that you only select what you see on the viewport. Now I'm going to turn it off for a second and I want to show you what I mean. So if I select stuff like this, let's go back and that selection is actually projected to the back. And that's what this icon will, it will select only what you see. So it won't select the back faces as well, which is very handy. So let me turn that on and let me redo that. You can see the back is not selected, which is perfect. Selecting to subtract. So whatever we're selecting right now will not have hair. So after you're done, enter. Now you can see that the selection has everything in the head, which is this, minus what we just selected over here, which is perfect. Okay, now let's see what the hair gen does right now. Nothing. It does exactly the same thing. Now we have to actually specify the selection, which we called head hair. So let's go here, head hair. Okay, there we go. Yeah, let's just do this. No template. So you can see the eye sockets and you can see there's no, oh, well, let me turn on the points. Okay, that helps a lot. You can see that we have our little eye sockets and we have a hole, which is where the beak used to be, which is perfect. Okay, I'm gonna delete this. So this was only for test to, to show you what it would look like. The hair looks a bit short. So let's adjust the hair length. Now we got an Einstein hairstyle going on here. No worries. It'll make the hair grooming process much more fun later on. The more segments here is sort of like the topology of each strand of hair. So the more segments means that the hair will curve better. If you have, if you don't have enough segments, well, there's nothing to bend on. Eight is good enough. Eight is a good start. Now, if you're doing like really curly pruning hair, you might want more. We can also use guide process nodes to adjust the hair length after the hair gen. So we come down here, we can throw down a guide process and you can see that there are a lot of these guys here. You can set the length, which is the exact same functionality as this slider, but it has a bit more. It has even a randomizing feature. You can set the direction, straighten, smooth, lift. The frizz is my favorite one because it adds a bit of realism to the hair. Nobody's hair is perfectly straight. Well, it can be if you gel it for like three hours, I guess. But the frizz gives it that little imperfection and that really sells the look a lot. There is another thing I want to mention, but I don't want to get into too much detail on, is that the length can also be controlled by attributes and attributes from the skin attributes. But I don't want to get 
too far into that. Basically, there's so many ways to control these things, but in this session, we're just gonna keep it simple. Now let's just put down a guide groom, just for good practice. Oh, sorry, a guide process. I kind of gave that away. The next one will be guide groom. And we're just gonna set down the length. I know we already made it longer, but this is good practice. Now be careful what you put into these. Hair guide goes to hair guides. This is skin goes to skin. So the tool tip is very handy. Now, why is that important? Because the hair gen is has it the other way around. It has skin as the first input, which it gets me every single time. I always have the wrong thing plugged into it. So you gotta be careful. There will be a bit of crisscrossing in the notes. For good practice, let's just try making the hair even longer. Now we got set length. Oh, I'm gonna add so it doesn't, um, so we don't lose what we had before. And what we're gonna do is add a bit of randomize. So we'll check this. You can see whether we have this randomize and the min and max length, how much randomizing you want. You can like whatever you add to the randomizing, it will be between the point one and point two. So if I make this really longer, you can see that the hair is, some of it is really, really long. Some of it is really, really short because we didn't add much or we can go zero, add nothing. But that's too extreme. So let's just keep it at zero and 0.2. I think that's good. Okay, now comes the fun part. Let's start grooming it. Throw down a guide groom. Now this lines up really nice. Another tip, if you wanna connect these easily, hold down J on your keyboard, just drag that. It'll connect all three of them. So that's a nice little shortcut. I find that this shortcut only works when you have the same number of inputs and outputs between the nodes. So if you did this on the hair gen and the guide process nodes, it's not going to do what you expect. Now the guide groom is manually grooming this. Um, those of you that have a drawing tablet, this will be super fun. Those of you that are using a mouse, it can still be done, but it's, it's not as fun. And it I mean, I've done it before and it really hurts your hand after a while. So it's not fun, but it is doable. Not recommended though. For this example, I'm gonna use the mouse. Let's start off with brush. Brush is really nice. Now come here, press enter, and you can see all these instructions and that's how you know that it's activated. So what you can do is, cause you can't see the skin. So you can tempt the skin over here if that'll help. And you can see that we don't see the beak anymore. So let's come over here and let's disable the visibility because we don't need that anymore. So we can see all of the geometry and that'll help us groom. Now scroll mouse will control the brush size. And I'm gonna nice brush it over here. Brush it over here. Isn't that fun? Now remember to change the perspective because it will look very different. You can't just groom it with one perspective. You have to keep changing. You have to look at it 360 degrees and groom just to give it a nice smooth look down so it doesn't look like a crazy bird. Now, what I want to do is get a smooth wrap around the eye socket and the ones down to go like that. I know it's a bit harder to see. Now, if you have trouble seeing this and you want a clearer view, we can go back to the hair gen over here. Now, all the way at the top, there's two tabs and you want the attributes and appearance. You can control the length uh, or the width of the strands of hair. So we can make it a little thicker so it's more visible, but you can see nothing happens over here. That's another thing I want to get into. We have to actually enable it in the viewport in order to see the shading of the hair in the viewport in SOPS. So exit out, go up to the uh, object context, select your hair node. Now, this is the one. Turn this one on. Shade open curves in viewport. This will allow the hair curves to be shaded in the viewport for SOPs. I believe that's the only thing. Let's go back in. Now, you can also adjust the width over here as well. So, this will allow you to see it better. Yeah, this is what I wanted to show you. So, this is the shading that we can see. Because we had adjusted the width in hair gen over here. So as opposed before, when I had adjusted this, we didn't see it happening. Now let's go back to the groom. Now the groom is a little finicky because the groom is cached. So whatever, if we disconnect this, it doesn't matter. It will keep whatever is in here. In fact, I can just take this and go to a different geometry. Now let's disable these guys, paste it in. 
and you get the exact same because it's cached this is manual grooming it it just caches it whatever you do before this is lost it's it's committed this is this is one of the sad parts but it is very fun to guide uh to use the guide groom now later on in the videos i'll show you different ways of grooming like more procedural ways using vex to control it and that will not rely on the guide group as much and it will be a more uh non-destructive workflow this however once you use the guide groom try to use the guide groom as the last node if you use it too early you're gonna lose all the work from before and say you wanted to change something if i go into the hair and i go like oh, let me connect this back now hold down j click and drag easy uh, shortcut say i want to add more to the hair I didn't want to just do the head. I wanted to do the body. So I'm going to add, I'm going to drag this down. I'm going to add another group and I'm going to extend it. Uh, so I've shown you, you can do that by reusing that same group name, head hair, right here. This is replacing it. We're going to choose something union, which is going to be adding more to it. So say I'm going to do this, adding more to it, but I have to select what to add. So I don't know. I want to add the body. And what this does is actually just add more to this. So I've added the wings as part of the body and the head. So this was just the head before. Now it's the body and the head. Say we wanted to do that and we're going to generate the hair. So we have hair everywhere, but we change the length. But once we hit the guide groom, it doesn't matter. It doesn't care because whatever you had cached is cached. What you can do is hit the clear button and just start all over you lose all your work up until this point sculpted or previous groomed uh hair this node is very committed now i don't want the the body so let's just bypass it and let's groom this one more time now the brush is fun to use because it's nice and easy oh let me template the rest of the body so we can see it now i am using the mouse so it's not great i'll try my best you should really consider getting maybe um a cheaper tablet like a smaller one i know wacom has those small tablets because i bought one of those for note taking oh you can control z so undo it if you do make a mistake but you can use the mouse i've used the most many years but not for production i've never used the most for production for grooming only for testing because it is very hard to get something good but i would assume most of you would probably use the procedural way so let's get this what well, i messed up the hair okay so brush is nice. This was just a taste of hair grooming in Houdini to kickstart you off. I'm super excited to the videos that come next. Grooming metahumans, Vex procedural grooming, animating hair grooms with the new Apex groom node. Grooming metahumans in Houdini with the new UE 5.6 updates where Epic Games create these really awesome HDAs for exporting hair grooms from Houdini to Unreal for metahumans. This opens up so many possibilities. You can even sell your hairstyles on fat.com. As a bonus, I even tried exporting my birdie groom into UE with the same provided HDA tools and it worked. So Epic Games has done it again and made things very easy to integrate between Houdini and UE, at least for hair. I have plans on creating vex driven hair grooms that will generate the hair more procedurally, all coming in the next videos in this hair series. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end.